video game droughts. This is a topic that I feel like comes up every single year from every games journalist out there, and they always talk about it like it's the worst thing in the world, that there's nothing to do. Why, why does anybody ever panic about this? Honestly, I mean, what I do agree with these game journalists are these are the things that you should be playing and not worrying about some drought that's going on because it really that never has happened that is there's never really been a gaming drought and even if there is there's such a massive aquifer underneath our feet if we're going to continue with the water analogy no matter what genre you're into there are almost an infinite amount of games in that genre that are worth playing and that's why i honestly think gaming droughts are a great thing yeah there's not as many games coming out during the summer. Here's this chart from 2010 to now showing that April, May, June, July, and August are a giant chunk of slow months when it comes to video games. And you know what, honestly, that's not a bad thing. We need this chunk as a break from all the massive AAA games and big hyped up marketing masterpieces that people are looking forward to because they're not always masterpieces, and a lot of the time they're overhyped. A lot of these games, yeah, they're making tons and tons of money, and EA, Activision, Microsoft, Sony, all these platforms love that we all buy these games and eat them up, but guess what? There are so many other older games or indie games that we could be playing that make the drought seem like it doesn't exist, especially nowadays when... There are so many live service games out there, I don't understand how there's ever a drought. I mean, if you get hooked on one of these live service games, you barely have time for anything else, let alone if it's an MMO. If it's an MMO, you have lost that entire period of time anyway, and then some. I remember when I played World of Warcraft back in the day, I missed so many big releases because I was just playing World of Warcraft. And a lot of people I've heard from that binge played that game for years said it was like stepping out of a time machine and they're just kind of looking around like, what have I missed? Oh my God, there's so many great games out here. What have I been doing? And then never went back to World of Warcraft again because they were missing out on so much. I would highly recommend any of you out there that only plays the newest AAA games, only the biggest, most hyped, most commercialized games out there to try something new. I think that's a great way to enjoy video games again because I don't know about you guys, but I've had so many times in my life where I just get burnt out of video games. I just get sick of them and I'm like, what's, what's the point? I'm just wasting my time here. And if you are able to think of the fact that you are wasting your time means that is just not a good game. That is a bad game if you are <laughs> very cognizant of how much time you're wasting. If you have completely lost track of time and it's now the next morning, that's the sign of a great game. Another sign of a great game is when you put the game down and you think about the next time you're playing it again. That is another amazing sign of a game and I feel like I haven't really gotten that from a AAA studio in a very long time. I mean, look at this wall behind me of video games. How in the world are you guys beating all of these games? Again. Going back to the idea of some sort of drought, some sort of lack of video games and lack of entertainment, when this, this exists, that's not even showing my Steam collection. Here are how many games I have on my Steam. Yeah, it's over a thousand because there are constantly new games coming out. And no, I did not pay retail for all those. In fact, Humble Bundle is a, one of the giant contributors. All these different bundle websites have contributed so much to my game collection. And honestly, yeah, I don't play a lot of those, but there are a ton of hidden gems I would have never even touched if it weren't for those amazing deals. I mean, you could get Resident Evil recently, like the entirety of the series for like 30 bucks. That's insane. And then I recently just got a VR headset, so now I have a whole nother library. It's like owning another console. There's so many more games that have just been expanded and shown to me. I mean, that's another thing you can think about doing. Not VR, but buying another console that you never interacted with before. And I'm not talking about buying a brand new one. I mean, it's hard enough to find a PlayStation 5 or Series X. I'm not telling you to run out there and buy another one. Plus, they're very expensive. But you could buy an older generation console like an Xbox 360 or PS3 or Wii U. Yes, the Wii U is a good console with a lot of great games on it. Please don't just dismiss it. I guarantee there's some great games on there for you. But if you go back to those other consoles that aren't hyped up, that aren't having people lose their minds and scalp all over the internet, you're going to be able to buy this system for really cheap 
or in a bundle with a ton of games, and now you've given yourself just hundreds of hours of content. Hell, you looking for hundreds of hours of content? Go play some RPG or some giant game that you've missed over these years, because I guarantee you've missed one. Maybe there's been a game that you've been thinking about buying for a really long time, and you've just been waiting for it to go on sale, and then it finally does. I mean, that's another way that you're playing new games and having new experiences. So again, it's so weird to hear that there's a drought. I mean, Cult of the Lamb just came out, and I know, again, that's not a big AAA game, but it's an indie game that has absolutely blown up. And those are worth paying attention to. And they're also a much cheaper price tag than a lot of these games. As the games industry shifts towards more monetization, more expensive base game prices, like $70 for a game. Look at indie games. I mean, 25 bucks for that game, Slay the Spire is constantly on sale. I think it's $20 even just full price. And honestly, for 20 bucks, I recommend that game. I mean, there's so many other genres out there you probably haven't even heard of. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people out there have heard of Slay the Spire, Monster Train, and other games like that, but they've never really tried a deck builder game before. It just seems daunting, it seems too difficult, but it honestly is worth trying. And there's a lot of other genres out there that look daunting at first, but once you sink your teeth into it and give it a chance, you might find that you really like these games. I mean, if you're looking for a game to just sink a whole ton of hours into, look at the RTS series. I mean, if you look at Total War, Warhammer, any of those games, you're dumping hundreds of hours. I mean, even Age of Empires 2 Remastered, or whatever the hell it's called nowadays, there's like, Remastered, H... I don't know. There's a bunch of them. Pick up one of those. You're gonna have so much fun if you enjoy that type of gameplay. But if you don't, again, there's so many other games out there that I'm sure will fill your needs. And the thing is, I mean, I talked about in a previous video that first person shooters really don't have anything new going for it, but the Master Chief Collection is still available and it's phenomenal. If you love FPSs, give that game a try. Doom, I mean, this, the two new Doom games are phenomenal. There are so many games in every genre that I guarantee that you've missed some. So these gaming droughts are a great way to just kind of collect yourself and pick up some old titles that you thought about playing in the past and give them a shot because there's so many games out there that deserve way more attention than a lot of these other games that have multi-million dollar advertising budgets. And I'm not telling you that guys that AAA games are all bad. I'm not saying, hey, only play indie games. I play everything and I will always encourage everyone to do the same because the more that you enjoy in life, the more enjoyable life is. It's that simple. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you're going to take this chance and this opportunity to start taking these gaming droughts and actually delve into different genres and try something new. I mean, it doesn't matter what year it is. I mean, if this, if you're watching this two years from now randomly, do it again. All the games that came out this year, now they're cheaper. Congratulations. All those games are so much cheaper. Nine times out of ten, games do not go up in price. They plummet which is phenomenal for us, the customer, because it means we get to have a lot more experiences at a lot more affordable prices. So yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any genre you're gonna check out or any game that you've been thinking about for a while that you're finally gonna pull the trigger on. Of course, like the video if you guys liked it and subscribe for more content. And as always, have a fantastic day. See you, everybody.